Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chrissy and I am the owner of Sugar and Spice Glitter Co. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how I created this beautiful Chevron Peekaboo Dawn Power Wash Tumbler. It is a mouthful, but there's a bunch of different techniques on here and I'm excited to show you guys how I created this beautiful tumbler. To be honest with you guys, I am so, so happy with how she turned out. I wasn't originally sure how it was gonna turn out when I first envisioned this kind of like technique and when it all came together. But when it was all done and finally complete, I just think she came out so beautiful. I hope you guys think the same and I really hope you guys are excited to see today's tutorial. But yeah, if you're excited to see how I created this beautiful tumbler right here, then keep on watching. So before we get started with anything else, the first thing I'm going to show you guys is how I prep the tops of my 20 ounce slurp. So in the previous tutorial that I did with this type of tumbler, I didn't show you guys this part. Um, so I'm going to show you how I tape off my tops. It's really simple. Before applying your tape, you want to remove a little rubber um, seal that the top has. Remove that and then you can apply your tape. Um, so you can see here that I'm just taking regular painter's tape and applying that around the uh, screw in part of the lid. Make sure you get a long enough piece because if not then you're going to have to take another piece and uh, add that on like I'm doing here. So once I have that nice and secure, I'm going to just go ahead and push the excess tape under. Um, it's not necessary, but I like to just stuff it down in there also. It just keeps um, the inside of that lid just a little bit more protected. So now I'm going to take a tiny, tiny piece, about an inch of tape, and I'm going to flatten that over the um, opening where the straw goes into. You can see I'm just kind of pressing it down. Then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and just trim around the outside part of where the straw would go inside of. So um, you can see I'm just taking my time and trimming the outside portion of the insert of the straw, so where that would go. Once I got that, I'm going to peel that up and there you go. Your hole is sealed. There's nothing's going to go in there. It's going to protect it from any spray paint when you spray it. You're good to go. So next thing we're going to do is spray paint the tumbler. Um, I do this part all the time in all of my tutorials, but first thing you want to do is sand down the base of your tumbler first, wash it off, spray it with alcohol, and then go in with your spray paint. I'm using a rose gold metallic color for this one because I didn't have a gold. Normally, I would like to spray paint the base of my tumbler um, to match the color of the glitter that I'm going in with. So I chose the close closest color that I had, which is rose gold. Um, and now I'm also doing the same exact thing to the lid as well. Once your spray paint is fully dried, we're going to go in with the glitter. So with this part, I thought I was recording, but unfortunately I wasn't. So I'm not able to show you, but I've done it tons of times in all of my other videos. I mixed up uh, about 5 ml of facet, spread it evenly around the entire tumbler, and then just applied my gold glitter. I did that for the tumbler and the lid as well. That's it for that. Once you let that fully cure, we're gonna go ahead and um, apply our resin and you're gonna wanna go ahead and resin until your tumbler is completely smooth. So for this tumbler, it took me two coats of resin. So the first coat I let cure and then I went in with a second coat, let cure. After that is fully cured on both the tumbler and the lid, we're going to go ahead and uh, sand that down a little bit. So next thing I'm going to do is begin to sand the tumbler and also the top. You can see that the tumbler is pretty smooth, but there are a couple of parts around the top a uh, little outer portion of the top and also the bottom rim that I want to smooth out with just a little bit of sanding. 
For this part, you don't want to go too extremely hard. I like to use the wet sand method because um, I feel like it's a little bit gentler, especially um, with the edges and the corners. You don't want to sand too, too much because if you do, you can dull the glitter and kind of rub that color off. So just be careful on this part. Make sure that you're touching and sanding very gently, making sure that you've smoothed out any rough parts. But like I said, again, don't go too hard. Once you're done sanding, you can go ahead and rinse off your top, wash it with soap and water, spritz it with alcohol, and put it to the side. With the actual tumbler itself, I didn't need to do too much sanding, but I did focus on the top rim and also the bottom portion. Those are usually the parts that are a little bit more rough than the body, um, but I did go in with just a general sanding on the body for any little pokey parts that were sticking up. Once you're done sanding, go ahead and wash your tumbler off with soap and water again. You can see that as I was washing off my tumbler, I noticed that there was some spots that were a little rough, so I did go in there with some more sanding. Um, but that's pretty much what the tumblers looks like once it's sanded and ready to go. Next step is to cut out our chevron pattern. So I was using this metallic foil adhesive vinyl that I had on hand. If you have a non-permanent adhesive vinyl, use that instead. This one was a pain in the butt to work with. I'm not even gonna lie. Chevron patterns on its own are a little bit difficult anyway. So yeah, if you have a non-permanent vinyl, definitely use that. So you can see I'm taking a full sheet of transfer sheet paper and I'm applying that over the entire um, chevron cutout that I have here. I am putting that onto the tumbler so that I can peel off the um, chevron pattern while it's on the tumbler. I thought it was gonna be a little bit easier. This part is kind of like trial and error, so if you feel like removing the lines before putting them on the tumbler, then that's definitely okay. I did that part. Um, I did that in another tutorial uh, a little while ago, so I'll be sure to link that here so you can see how I did it on another tumbler. So here's where you can see that I'm pulling off the lines, um, the in-between lines of the chevron pattern. Yeah, I know it looks crazy. <laughs> Um, but here in this part, so like this tumbler is a tapered tumbler. It's not completely straight. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to put on patterns, especially when they're like supposed to be lined up evenly. The taper makes that really hard to do. So you can see here that I had some overlapping lines. So I'm just going in with my X-Acto knife and trimming those up and trying to make it as evenly as possible. There's a couple of spots here that doesn't line up evenly, but no worries because I'm going to cover that up with the decal at the end. Once you have your chevron pattern on your tumbler, we're going to go in and ombre our spray paint. This is going to be the base layer for the red and green glitter. So I'm starting at the top of the tumbler with the red spray paint, just going with short like spurts of, spurts of um, spray paint. And I'm angling the tumbler away from me so that when the spray paint lands on the tumbler, it kind of gives it that fading effect. So now I'm going in with a fluorescent green. If you have a more opaque green, definitely use that. Fluorescent colors tend to be more translucent. However, because I'm using metallic uh, glitter that is very full coverage. Um, I just wanted to have just a base of that green. It didn't need to be full coverage because the glitter is going to cover that anyway. So I'm doing the same exact thing going in short spurts all around the entire tumbler, kind of trying to fade that in between. Again, we're going to cover that with glitter so it doesn't need to be perfect. Just try to get it as close as possible. So you're gonna to wanna to let your spray paint base dry 100% completely. And now I'm going to mix my facet and I'm gonna apply that all around the entire tumbler and then we're gonna get started with our glitter ombre. So 
So just make sure that you apply your resin nice and evenly over the entire tumbler. Don't miss any spots. And also make sure to fill in between that vinyl um, chevron pattern so that you don't miss any spots. So now I'm going to start applying my green glitter, which is the bottom portion, bottom half of my tumbler. And I'm going in pretty heavy on the bottom part of the tumbler, just taking my time. And as I begin to move up towards the middle part of the tumbler, I kind of let the rest of that glitter fall down. So you can see that the closer I get to the middle part of the tumbler, the higher my hand goes up, the higher the glitter falls onto the tumbler and kind of scatters. We're gonna do the same thing with the red again. As I'm working on the top portion of the tumbler, my hand is pretty close with the glitter. I'm letting it fall intentionally where I want it to. The closer I get to the middle portion of the tumbler, the higher my hand goes up and the higher I angle my tumbler so that the glitter can kind of trickle down. Um, I would go ahead and repeat that for both colors back and forth just to give that ombre effect a little bit um, more blend. Once that's done, now the next part you're gonna wanna do immediately after is go in and start peeling up that chevron pattern. Now, for this part, a tip that I wanna give you guys that I didn't do is you're probably going to want to place some glue dots or some sort of something that's gonna stick out of your glitter so that you know where your vinyl lines are. Um, I didn't do that and it was a little bit difficult to see under the glitter because the metallic glitter that I'm using is so full coverage. Yeah, so make sure you go ahead and do that. It makes it a lot easier to pull that up. Once you let that fully, fully cure, we're gonna go ahead and brush off some of that excess and um, seal that with a clear Krylon um, clear sealer. So I'm gonna seal that like a good one to two times, let that dry, and then we can go in with our resin. So now it's time to apply our resin. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with Facet one more time. And I'm gonna put a nice, generous amount of Facet going in with um, a lot. I, I mixed up 30 mLs here of Facet and I believe I used almost all of it. Um, and then I also do apply some to the top as well. So just go ahead and apply that uh, all over the entire tumbler and then let that cure. I'm gonna go in with two good solid coats of facet here before going into the next step. So once those two, two layers of resin is fully cured, we're gonna go in and trim off the excess on our rim here with the sharp X-Acto knife. That's done, I'm gonna start um, dry sanding the tumbler. So here, I usually go in with a wet sand. For this part, I just decided to go in straight in with the sanding block, um, and I'm doing a light sand. Again, because I went in with two really good coats of that resin, there's not much that I have to sand, but I'm just trying to make sure that it's really smooth, because this next part, we're gonna be going in with spray paint, and you want a super smooth surface for this part. Since I saw this technique, I've been dying to try it and it just so happened that this tumbler was perfect. So we're gonna go in with the Dawn Dish Soap Power Wash technique. And yeah, I am spraying the entire tumbler with the Dawn and I'm leaving the part open where I wanna cover with the spray paint. Remember before that I said there was a little bit of imperfection where the um, chevron pattern lined up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover that with the spray paint and then spray around the entire tumbler just to give that splattered bleach effect. And then once I got the spray paint where I want it and it's nice and opaque and covered, I'm gonna go ahead and wash that off immediately with the hose. So you can see that that washes off really well. And what gets left behind 
is your spray paint splatter effect. I ended up letting this part dry and going in again because I wanted the front part to be a little bit wider. So you can see here that it covers more of the tumbler. So next thing you want to do is grab your acetone and we're going to start cleaning off all that extra spray from the spray paint. I don't want too much of this fogginess going on. So I'm taking just my index finger with some acetone and cleaning off that spray paint as much as possible. Now you do want to make sure that you clean it off. If you don't get all of it off, it's going to leave your tumbler cloudy. So I go in with a couple of wipes of acetone and then I also go in with um, alcohol. Once you have that nice and cleaned off, now we're going to let that dry and go in with the top layer of resin before applying the decal. You want to hit that with a little bit of heat just to pop any bubbles that may be coming up on the surface. You want to let that fully cure and then we can move on to the next step, which is applying our decal. This decal, I purchased it on Etsy. I will have the link of the shop down below as well as all the links to the glitters that I use for this tutorial and any other product that I use in this tutorial will always be linked down below. You can see here that I left a lot of the vinyl on this design. So I decided to just weed the design while it's on the tumbler. So you're going to see that. See me do that in this next step. Now that the first part of the vinyl design is on, we're going to go ahead and apply the second part. Carefully peel up your transfer sheet and if you need to make any changes to the placement of the lettering, like if I had to do, like I had to do here with the C, carefully peel it up and reposition that. Once that's on, you're pretty much ready to go. You want to go ahead and epoxy till smooth, let that fully cure, and you're done. As always, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, then please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted every time we upload a brand new video. Thank you guys so much for watching today's tutorial and I'll see you guys in my next video.